But the good news is that the Russian people have demonstrated to the world that they have faith in their hearts. And they're not afraid to die. And we on this side from the world of Islam, we look at you and we admire a people who are not afraid to die. And this is a, as a consequence of something in your heart, something called faith. And you are therefore an Orthodox Christian people with whom we have a sense of affinity. We are brothers. We are brothers. You follow the Son of Mary, the true Messiah. You follow the Son of Mary, the true Messiah. We follow Muhammad. Allah's blessings be upon him. We also are conscious of the fact that the Russian people have the capacity to make sacrifice. You sacrificed tremendously in the First World War. And before that, you, suffered, you sacrificed and you suffered tremendously in three years of the Crimean War. And millions died in the First World War. Millions died in the Second World War, even though you were led in the Second World War by the Soviet Union which was an atheist state, and yet you fought courageously to stop Germany. And so you are people who are accustomed, <laughs> accustomed to suffering. And we admire that you show no sign of fear, even though you know there's a war coming, and it's going to be a nuclear war. Our prophet, Allah's blessing be upon him, informed us of where the war would begin. Yes, we know it's going to begin in the north of Syria. That's what he said. But the beginning of the war is not as important as the consequences of the war. And the consequences of the war is, he said, 99 out of every 100 who fight in that war would be killed. And so it's a unique war that's coming. It's a war in which weapons of mass destruction would be used for the first time on such a scale. And we have only admiration for you that you're not afraid of the consequences of that war. When we look at the other side, we see rent an army. We see people being brought to fight and being offered cards and being offered <laughs> green cards and all these things. And they're only there in the army fighting for the monetary dividends. So that can't be an army with fate. But on your side, it's an army of fate. And that's a big difference between the two, when these two armies face each other in the Great War. Not only are we proud of the fact that there are many, many, many Muslims fighting in the Russian armed forces, yes, from Chechenia, for example. But we have something more to share with you in today's video. And that is that the Lord God himself We'll be helping you in that walk. This is how we start our subject today. Russia and the Great War. And we want to take you to the Quran. And to explain the Quran is perhaps never explained before to you in Russia. The only, the only knowledge that you have of Islam is Ottoman Islam. And Ottoman Islam was one that provokes such pain, and suffering, disgust, bitterness, and hatred that it has lingered and lingered and lingered for centuries. And now that we present to you a different Islam, 
The one that comes from the Quran, not from the burial of an Ottoman gun. It takes your women and enslave them and take your sons and convert them to Islam by force to the eternal shame and disgrace of the world of Islam. Today we take 600 years of Ottoman brainwashing and we take the book of Allah, the Quran, and we wipe it away. What does the Quran say to you? The Orthodox Christian world led by Russia. This is what we want to share with you. There are many who will listen to this video and say, Sheikh, we heard that already. Well then, why don't you go and listen to someone else? Because I'm talking today to the Russian people who may never have ever heard this before and they're hearing it for the first time. We know the outcome of the big war that's coming, the great war. We know that the Lord God is going to intervene in this great war. And we want to take you to the Quran. We want to take you to what the Quran has recorded. At that moment when they were attempting to crucify Jesus, the son of Mary. And he did not know what was going to happen. But the Lord God, he knew. And he spoke to Jesus. And those words are recorded in the Quran. And I share them with you today. It is located in this, the, the uh, third surah of the Quran called uh, Ali Imran, the people, the house of Amran. Amran being the father of Moses and of Aaron. Ali Imran. And he speaks to Jesus and he says, Oh Jesus, Ya Isa, I'm going to take your soul. And of course, when the Lord God takes the soul, he can either keep it or return it. And if he keeps it, well, they have succeeded. They have killed him. <laughs> but the Lord God said, no, they did not succeed. I made it appear like that. And so therefore, he took the soul and he returned it. But they didn't know that. And then he said, I'm going to raise you unto myself. Hmm? And so the son of Mary was raised unto the Lord God himself. This is the Quran.